If you're looking at the screen, you'll see a QR code. If you want to download this presentation, point your phone at the QR code and I will keep the screen on for a couple more uh, seconds. So you might be thinking, why do I need to talk, think about 2025 today? I'm in the midst of managing the coronavirus. There is lots of things going on. 2025, still five years away, so that can wait. And you might be right, but I think that when we started to think about 2025 and what the world of HR look like, looks like in 2025, we discovered that change is never, um, it, it, change is always gradual. So what you do today affects what you can do tomorrow and what you are able to do in a couple of years. We ran a survey called HR 2025 uh, towards the end of 2019, simply because we were interested in what employers and employees were thinking about the future of work. And in my role, uh, managing strategy and alliances for NGA, this was very important because we wanted to understand what our customers and what the employees of our customers were looking for in the future of work. And this presentation will give you an insight because after coronavirus, you will have to think about how to attract new people again. And especially because trust in employers is at an all-time high. This is the Edelman Barometer. They survey trust in employers, in NGOs, in the media, in government. And what you see is that from the beginning in 2007, trust in employees uh, in employers has been up. And at this point in time, it is the highest ever, but also the highest compared to all the other groups. And even now with the coronavirus, they did another survey in March 2020, just to see what was going on. Employee, employees are mentioning that employer communications are the more, most credible source of information. So through the coronavirus, employees have high trust in employers that they will manage through this, that they will do the right thing, and most importantly, that they will help their employees manage through this. Now, during this corona crisis, many of us had to change very quickly. You were working in an office, suddenly you were working from home. You can see that also companies are pivoting super quick um, there's breweries who now make hand sanitizers. They brought all the beer back to distill the alcohol, to, uh, to make that for hospitals. But you also have companies like car manufacturers who are creating respirators. Mattress factories are um, suing face masks. So all kinds of people are enormously creative and flexible to manage through the coronavirus. Like I mentioned, employees are working from home, they are combining work and care, but they're also longing for some predictability. What is going to happen next? Is this long-term? Is this short-term? When can we go back to the office? Or do we even have to go back to uh, the office? And underneath that all is a layer of fear and uncertainty. Um, governments are paying enormous amounts of money to companies, to employees to help them through it, but we're also witnessing unprecedented unemployment uh, numbers, and we should be very careful about that. Now, these government packages almost take the form of something that many people have been longing for for a very long time, which is universal basic income experiments. And so that is something that we're watching, um, that we're watching too. But every crisis accelerates technological innovation, and that is happening now too. And what you see is that a number of innovations that were already there are now going to be ubiquitous in our societies. So when we think about our societies after the coronavirus, is not gonna say over, but after the situation changes for the better, we'll still see that people will have, um, will need to think about how do we create a touchless society? How do we create a cashless society? So that we do not have to touch money that goes through hands of very many people. 
um, how do we continue to work remotely? And also, how do we create something that we hear in the Netherlands? So I live close to Amsterdam. In the Netherlands, we call it the 1.5 meter society after Corona. And um, you can compare that to a five feet um, society. What it means is we need to think about a society for the next one or two years until we have a vaccine where social distancing is the norm and where we create something that is available for everyone, not only for people who can work remotely, but that also include essential workers and others, other people like people who now get, uh, become unemployed. So when you put all of that um, together, there's an enormous amount of change coming towards us, but we also can build upon an enormous amount of innovations that have been created in the past couple of years and that we maybe did not use that well. So when we think about 2025 and when we think about reimagining how we work, these are things that we have to keep in mind because maybe now 2025 will be 2027, but the fact that we have, that we are dealing with the coronavirus does not mean that innovations do not happen and that people are not thinking about work differently from before. So what we were seeing and, and what, we, what we heard from companies when we were interviewing for the 2025 study is that many of them go global and virtual from the start. Now, during times of Corona, that's an enormous advantage because if you have people not working in offices, but all working from home in different countries, you can benefit from the fact that these people can, so, can be socially distant very easily, but also because they're in different countries, they go through different phases of the coronavirus. What we also see, what we also heard is that there's a lot of questions around diversity, inclusion, social responsibility. And right now it's an excellent time for companies to show their, how socially responsible um, they are or, by, or not, but that will come out very, uh, very quickly. But how, whatever we think about the future in 2025 or 2027, um, we will be looking at different ways of working. We will be looking at remote working, but also about part-time retirement because many older people came out of the financial crisis without their full pensions. Now imagine if that was the case and now we're going through this crisis can again, then that will also mean that their pensions go down and they will have to work longer than they had originally anticipated. We've all witnessed um, the rise of the gig economy and it's very likely that if you start to work at 20 but your life expectancy is around 90 or 100, you work for a very long time, many years, and that means you cannot work in the same career, you cannot work for the same company, you will switch. And that is what we're already seeing. Average tenure is down to about two and a half years at this point in time. Now, when I created this slide um, with new jobs that we, will re that we will reinvent towards 2025, I realized today that I had quarantine enforcer um, in the middle, and that is uh, actually very accurate uh, today. But let's hope that that moves to the background a little bit and that we can focus on other things like crypto bankers, trash upcyclers, body modification ethicists, very different roles from today. These are some of the things that we are starting to witness. And the one thing that these, um, that these professions have in common is that they all rely on a a large amount of technological innovations that we are witnessing before our eyes. Now, jobs are not the only thing that is changing. The way we get paid is also changing. And more pay will be cashless. It will be digital. We expect that we will see more QR codes, for instance, uh, to replace invoices. We also know that people regard more income sources as better. This is also coming from the financial crisis 10 years ago, 
where people just do not want to rely on one income source anymore. So many people have like a side job or they do some gig work. Um, they have a little website where they sell things or they, they sell stuff on Etsy.com. Um, so people are diversifying their income streams. And also during this Corona crisis, that is a very good thing to have. Now, what we also think is that it will be more difficult. People will have to manage their financials. And that means that you have to be financially literate. And that is something where companies and HR can provide some, uh, some help. So we think about 2025. Um, we also asked employees, what do you want for your, from your company in 2025? What kind of employer do you want to work for? What are you looking for? And what we found is that flexibility was the most desired quality in an employer. If you look at generations, if you look at regions in the world, everyone is looking at flexibility. And what are people actually asking when they talk about flexibility? We decided to dig a little deeper. On the one hand side, they wanted flexible hours. As you can see on the, on the screen, it's like half of them, almost half of them want flexible hours, meaning that they determine when they work and they step away from traditional office hours. You see also on this slide that there's still a 20, 12 to 20% in all generations that would like to maintain traditional office hours because some people just like that. They like that they know exactly that, that they are when to start and when to finish. And that is, they, they enjoy that structure that it provides them. As you see at the bottom, something else came up um, also that there was a need to compress work hours. And what many people wanted from that was a more outcome based uh, management style instead of you have to be here for 40 hours and then we watch you do the work. The second thing that we noticed around flexibility is that people were asking for location, for freedom of location. So close to 65% is wanting flexibility to combine home and office. And I know that with the coronavirus, many people, and then you read many publications that are stating, oh, this is the breakthrough of remote working and people will never want to go back. I don't think that that is true. But when we talked to people during the survey, they were not asking for strictly home-based or strictly office-based. They were asking for flexibility. They still want to go into a workplace one or two days a week because they want to see their colleagues. They want to work with their, uh, with their colleagues. And I think that is one of the things that comes out when you talk to people who have been forced to work at home right now is they miss um, the water cooler, they miss running into someone at the coffee machine and having a conversation. Um, so the flexibility to combine home and office is what the majority is after, not a full uh, full time work from home job, although that was also um, about seven um, percent and then what you can also see is that twenty three percent was really asking for the opportunity to work anywhere in the world. Now, travel has been severely curtailed, I would say, um, so I think that will uh, that will be for uh, for the future. The other thing that will probably not surprise you is that healthcare was the most popular employee benefits that people are asking for. Now, the reason why healthcare for themselves scores a little lower is because in many countries around the world, there is already universal healthcare. And so these people have healthcare for themselves and everyone was really clear about the fact that healthcare for family, for their family members, uh, for their dependents, was what they desired most, more than other um, benefits um, like uh, performance-based bonuses or a retirement plan or a paid leave for um, to care for for uh, sick um, family members. So this is one of the things that 
corona, the coronavirus um, will probably bring more and more to the spotlight, people will increasingly ask for healthcare benefits just because they are now living through what it means if they don't have healthcare. So this is one to really think through and watch out for and also um, to offer if you want to be a really um, attractive employer uh, for many people. Now, when it came to technology, um, we and, and careers, we asked them, how will technology influence your, uh, your career? And as you can see that the majority of people think that technology will change um, or will influence how their careers develop. They, will, they think that they will have different jobs, uh, even in different fields. The only people that didn't think that were the baby boomers, but by 2025, most of them will retire. So it's obvious why they um, score so high uh, on that very unlikely um, element. Now, the good thing is that if you think about work in 2025, 65% of our respondents accepted that they will be part of a hybrid human machine workforce. So they will, be, they will work um, side by side with a bot. Some people said it's already happening because they work in factories. Others say it is in, inevitable. But there's also 11% of the population that are greatly worried. And that is something to address. Um, or even some people th that thought it will not happen. Mm. And that's almost 20% if you tie that, if you um, tie that together. The thing is that especially this at this stage with coronavirus, we will see that technology will lift off and will permeate far more into our workspaces than before. And so it's really important to think of ways to help these people through, um, through the change. Because what was really interesting to us was that 61% of the respondents believes that they are ready for the future of work. And when we then asked them how well they thought that schools and universities are preparing people for this future of work, we got a completely different picture, as you can see. Almost 65% um, of the people that we interviewed thought that schools and universities and training is not preparing them at all for the future of work. So the real interesting question is, how, are they, how do they know that they are ready for the future of work if their training doesn't provide them the knowledge to be ready? Um, we think we came away from the interviews um, with the conclusion that people are overestimating their own uh, capabilities. Um, and so there's a lot of work in education uh, to be done in, uh, in the near future for, uh, for employers to make sure that employees um, stay productive. Now, if you tie that all together, what does that mean? And especially in light uh, of the coronavirus and the times that we are living through right now, we are seeing that trust in employers is high, it's very high, um, but that is also, uh, it's also very fragile. Um, there is a saying in the Netherlands where I live um, that trust walks in, but it leaves on horseback, meaning it's very, very easy to lose trust. There's only small things that you have to do wrong and employee trust will be completely eroded. So if you have it, you have to cherish it and you have to do the right things. Now, employees came out of the study as wanting work to fit their current lifestyle. And current lifestyle means that in their 30s, they might have a young family, young children. Um, so they're juggling daycare, schools, and, uh, and work. And so they need flexibility in roles and working hours and location. That, flex that request for flexibility changes once they get into their 40s, where they start to care for older parents, those parents don't live uh, near their homes, so they are looking more at other ways of flexibilities, days off, so that they can care for, uh, for their parents or travel to where their parents live, for instance. So current lifestyle and 
the, the opportunity to create, almost create um, your job and, and build your job around your lifestyle came out as the number one concern for, uh, for employees. Um, they also embrace new technology. I talked about how they probably overestimate their own knowledge a little bit. Um, but they demand more training. So when they look at new employers, when they want to change uh, jobs, they're definitely scoping out how much training you provide and what others say about you. And then distributed flexible workforces um, increase the resilience of a company. And so it is, especially with an experience like the coronavirus in mind, extremely important that you think about putting people in different locations, if you can, in different locations in a country, different locations around um, the world, uh, let people work from home simply because employees find it more attractive if you are able to offer um, them that. It can potentially reduce cost because you need less facilities. Um, but there's also a big question mark and that is, can you push your leadership into managing people based on outcomes instead of based on location and on time spent uh, at that location? So I think there's a lot to do. There's also a lot that we found in the 2025 um, study that applies to life after the coronavirus. So I wish you much success in reimagining the new normal. And if you need some help, you can find the resources that I just went through plus more uh, at the link. And you can also reach out to me at LinkedIn or on Twitter. And I'm going to give it back to Enrique to see if there are any questions.